Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's that time again for another podcast stuff here. And actually, <laughs> let me get rid of this splash screen for us. There we go. Silly splash screen. Right. Eventually, I'll get like a, go- a good one other than just the Ravnica stuff. Even though I like the Ravnica stuff. Yeah. But well, here's my question about that one. Why is the Demir signet on- or sign- symbol on there? It's not supposed to be. That is true. That is true. Doesn't it's, make sense. It's the secret guild. Um, yeah. Because it had to showcase them all, you know, show show off the coolness uh, of it. Um, but okay. hello, guys. I'm Nan Man. Mortarn is joining us today. What's up? Um, and we're getting back into another Magic podcast. Um, of course, if you guys followed us when we did our previous one, it was called State of the Gathering. We did that with Pat. Uh, that focused on standard legacy drafting. It focused on Whatever everything. You wanted. Yeah, just uh, you know everything. Uh, but Brandon and I are, are, are mainly modern players, so we wanted a show that kind of had that focus on modern. So uh, we decided to start up a another podcast, and uh, I guess this is technically episode one? Yeah, that sounds about right. We, we had our, like our pre-episode one that we recorded like a month ago or so that was yeah. everything again, but uh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to be doing modern uh, as the main focus of it, so... Uh, we'll at least be putting it up here on Twitch, uh, you know, twitch.tv slash the real name for the time being. Uh, it'll be uploaded to YouTube and everything. Um, so you'll be able to catch it all over the place. Um, and, and eventually we might get it, its own Twitch channel for it and stuff like that. But for now, you guys can catch it here. Yeah. Um, so, Brandon, do you want to at least get started with kind of your background or your kind of play style or sure. anything with modern? Uh, so, I guess it, it kind of dates back to when I started playing Magic. Um, in standard, and the first deck I really played was, wow, this Jun deck looks fun. Little did I know, it was like the scourge of the format. <laughs> this is an Innistrad Thera, or um, Innistrad Ravnica. Mm-hmm. And I thought, oh, yeah, that looks fun. Just play Huntmasters and Drag Tests and do stuff. Uh, so I, I went and got that one together I, without realizing it was, you know, like the best deck ever. <laughs> so I started playing that and just kind of really liked to play that kind of style. And when I'm like, well, I should play modern. It looks fun here. I just saw Jund. Just figured I'd play that in every format. So yeah. best colors, my... right? What's that? I said best colors, right? Yeah, I mean, just like play the best colors, which are clearly the Jund colors. So, <laughs> I mean, white's awful. Blue's good, but it's too broken. <laughs> and red, I mean, we wouldn't play it, but it has lightning bolt, so it's worth it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's pretty much what it is. Pretty much um, it goes. Basically, just gravitated towards liking green, black X decks, and I think Jund uh, just felt like the best one. I, I like playing with Lightning Bolt too. Like I said, it's pretty sweet. Um, so, so I got that deck together. Now I'm kind of branching out a bit. I've got a Teamer Twin deck almost completely made. I need a couple fetches, Serum Visions, and one other thing: Snapcaster Mages, which oh, are like hundred dollars a piece now. The expensive stuff. Oh yeah, yeah just the really <laughs> expensive stuff. <laughs> I got all my Misties, I just need my Tarns now. And I, I got one Tarn, so we're getting there. We're getting close-ish. Um, and I do have a place I can borrow all that stuff from, so I can play the deck now, which is sweet. Nice. Um, hopefully that'll help me get better with other decks as well. So, yeah, that's, that's what I'm doing with Modern right now, just playing those two decks, trying to get good with them. Um, just a lot of practice. This format is one where you just really need to know exactly how the format is. you, know, you got to sideboard correctly, so... Learning your decks is very important. Cool. Um, so I, of course, am Nan Man. Um, I've been playing Magic for many, many years now. Uh, I guess I started out in 8th edition, um, but didn't really play competitively then. Um, I did a whole little write-up about my history, like a brief one, when I recap my last tournament experience. Uh, if anybody wanted to check that out, I won't go too much into it, other than I started up playing Modern in 2013 uh, time period. It was kind of like right around that time period where uh, Ravnica was rotating out um, and uh, Theros was rotating in, and I was not really enjoying Standard as much, uh, and I liked Modern a lot more and was really trying to focus more on it, and, you know, I played... Uh, I had an Infect deck when I used to play sort of kitchen table and, and was a jerk like that, so it made sense to try to go into that sort of style. Uh, since then, I, I just kind of make all sorts of decks in Modern, uh, and not so much of, of the cookie-cutter top-tier decks, 
um, <laughs> more of like the the fringe decks that I love to make. I, I guess in fact is kind of my closest cookie cutter deck that I've got there. But everything else, like I play uh, blue green Tron, I play black white tokens, I have a Merfolk deck, I've got uh, eight rack, I've got um, other decks that now I can't think of. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, just sort of like the the more out there for for fun decks that I've been playing. But if if I want to go for the competitive style, I I play uh, in fact as my go to deck there. And I think Merfolk's getting pretty competitive now too, though. Yeah, the blue, the blue white Merfolk. Uh, mine still is mono blue for it. Okay. Um, one of our buddies that plays at our shop, he opted for the blue white one, um, and so I've I've been studying his build for it, and, and have been debating about switching over and, and going for that style. Um, but we'll, we'll see. I mean, we we get a new Merfolk coming up uh, in Origin, so maybe that'll be the time yeah. for me to revamp really it, revamp my deck. So. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got a couple things to talk about today, guys. A few general news type stuff that might apply to us in the future. A um, couple of stuff to talk about with drafting, because, uh, of course, Modern Masters came out. Origins is about to come out, so we'll talk a little bit about some of the cards that might uh, be seen in other formats. Um, and then we'll kind of recap some of the most recent GPs, uh, since there's been at least three modern GPs. Um, and then talk about season four uh, for the GP season there. So, um, so we've got the changes to the mulligan rule. Yeah, uh, which is a bit of a big deal. Some people have been uh, a little bit more excited about it. Some people are nervous about it. Uh, Brandon, what's your take on the, on the new rule? I my question is: Is this ninety percent good or a hundred percent good? Like I'm. <laughs> I'm not sure. I think it's probably 100. I think this rule is just great. Okay. Like, if you're going to take away from those just non-games in Magic, and you're doing so in a way that doesn't you know, really benefit anyone too much, mm -hmm. if you're mulliganing, then this helps you a bit. Which, I mean, I don't think the win rate's going to go to 50-50 because of this. It's probably going to be something like 35-65 or whatever it is. Yeah. So it's still not good, but it, it, it just helps a little bit, which I really like. Um, yeah, and in case you guys missed it and you have no idea what we're talking about, um, with Pro Tour, Magic the Gathering uh, Origins, or for, only for that one right now, uh, yeah. they're, they're going to be testing out um, a new mulligan rule. That if you mulligan down to six or five or four, or what if you go down to a mulligan, you get to scry after you agree to keep that hand. So say you, you say, you know what, this is a crappy hand, I'll mold a six, look at your six, like, alright, I think this is keepable, I think I can try it out. Say yes, I'll keep, scry. and then scry one. Yeah. So this happens after each player is declared mulligans, mm -hmm. and they're keeping, and then it goes in turn order of who's the active player. So okay. whoever's on the play is going to do this first. And just it all makes sense. It, I, I would have maybe been a little uh, wary of it if it's like you just mulligan each time. Yeah. Like after you scry once, you get to, or after you mulligan once, you, you get to scry oh, and then decide. That would be a little too good. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but, I like this. I, I know there is a little bit of, of um, hesitation might not be the right word. Some people are a little bit concerned with how it's going to work against a Delver deck. Um, sure. That kind of makes sense. Um, but I think there was some post up on, on the Magic Reddit uh, subreddit recently about people discussing it. Um, and, and like they, they broke it down that... Um, there's only a few things that really buff up this Delver deck, like, um, you know, if, if you mulligan, you're on the play, and the top card that you scry is not already an instant or sorcery kind of thing, and you yeah. pop it into an instant and sorcery kind of thing, and, like, there's just, like, really specific things that would really benefit you by it, but... I, and it's like, what is the factor of you actually having a turn one Delver with just a straight up blue source and not having to fetch into a blue source. So, you know, the, these other things that you have to, to kind of factor in uh, with it, which I thought was, was, was a good breakdown of it. Um, but uh, uh, overall, I'm, I'm really interested to see how the rule is going to apply. I don't know if anybody else has started testing it out. Like, you know what, let's just try playing it out that way and see how it works. Yeah. Um, I have not yet, but I might I have a you know, just just for for funds on, on Tuesday or something, uh, in between actual tournament games, uh, just playing uh, 
a game and trying out the mulligan rule, but mm. we'll, we'll see. Yeah, I have tried it a bit. Like, we did a cube draft yesterday. Mm -hmm. We did a barbecue plus cube draft, of course. It's not a barbecue without one. <laughs> so <laughs> so I, I was just like, yeah, why don't we try the new scry rule with my second round opponent? We agreed. Mm -hmm. I mulled, and, like, I don't know. We got to scry one. It didn't feel super um, influential. Like, I, I won the game, but, you know, I just topped the card. So <laughs> didn't even matter. Okay. <laughs> like, do I want to draw this dissolve? Yes. Yes, I, I do. <laughs> Wow, early interaction, thank you. <laughs> so, I, I don't think you, you know, obviously it didn't even change anything in that game. It just made me know that I'm going to draw a Dissolve, but it makes me a little more comfortable keeping one-landers on yeah. six. Yeah. Knowing that I can scry through at least one online card, mm -hmm. which is, it's really nice. Because a lot of the times you're going to mull your six-card hand because it's a one-lander, and you're like, well, if this had one of a land, it's certainly keepable. I... I guess I have to mulligan though, because what if my top card isn't a land? Right, right. I'm just screwed. So, yeah, it, even if it just helps that, I think it's still a great change. I, I really hope they're going to keep it, like going forward. Yeah, I, I think we'll, we'll see how it goes, but it sounds like a lot of people are, are pretty happy with, with how it's going to be. Yeah. Um, just a few other things to note with, with the talking about the mulligan rule update, they also were talking about some coverage yeah. nuances, if you will. Uh, that if you are on video coverage, which, to be honest, most players out there are not going to be on video coverage, so it doesn't matter that much. If you want to have your graveyard on the other side of the field and your cards upside down, your lands facing your opponents and your creatures in the back, then <laughs> that that's all for you. But if you are on video coverage, you have to lay out your library and your graveyard and your creatures and your lands in a certain way. Yep. So just to help streamline it for viewers yeah. and just make it a little bit easier for, for people in general. So. so, like, my initial reaction to this was, oh my god, why? Like, what? <laughs> why is this necessary? I know I hate lands in front as much as anything else, but mm -hmm. is this really a thing that they should be doing? And, like, I'm like, wow, wizards, why, why you do this? And then I just thought about it more. I'm like, well, like you said, it's hardly going to affect anyone. Yeah. And a viewer... Like, this doesn't apply to me anymore because I kind of get what's going on, but someone new tunes into a game and they see Adrian Sullivan with his cards, like, just in these crazy formations. <laughs> they're just going to be confused. Yeah. I don't know what they're doing. They're like, uh, is this how you're supposed to play? Like, <laughs> on the right side, you do this weird stuff, and if you're on the left side, you don't. I don't get it. And then they're going to not be interested, yeah. potentially because of that. So, I, I mean, I guess this is just another good change. <laughs> yeah, just, just a little weird nuance thing yeah. in regards to that that I just wanted to kind of highlight there. Um, the other thing that doesn't really matter too much is like the, the judges, they're going to have be able to review footage and stuff. Yeah. It's cool. Good I, job, guys. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> if I really particularly like it or not. Like, it's going to make the future match just take longer. Yeah. Which is already a problem. Mm. Like, um, everyone else has done the round 10 minutes before the future match, if they go to time. Yeah. So, you're already waiting on them. Now you're going to be waiting like 20 minutes, maybe, sometimes. Uh, yeah, it's if there's, a long if there's something that needs to get looked up. Yeah. But, I, I don't know. This one, I'm not sure about. <laughs> well, we'll see when all that stuff starts to really kick in and, and everything there. Um, and that was just sort of the general stuff we wanted to, to highlight. Uh, now we can go and talk Modern Masters. Because that came out beginning of summer there. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you guys have had your chance to be able to do some drafting, um, you know, maybe pull some awesome stuff, some cool money <laughs> things, whatever. So that's what not, we're going to open it up to. Not me, man. I don't know what, what, what happened there. What's a money card? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I sadly have only gotten to draft Modern Masters one time. Huh. Um, but like I said, uh, well, I was talking to Brandon before the show, is that uh, my buddy has a box sitting in the trunk of his car waiting for the time for all of us to get together and, and sit down and draft it again. Uh, but I had a blast being able to, to draft it, and I've watched quite a few other drafts um, right. afterward. Just online. Yeah, just online and stuff like that. But I sadly only got to play once. Um, I got lucky enough that at my table, um, all the artifact stuff was being passed to <laughs> me, pretty much. So I drafted a super sweet blue-white uh, affinity deck, um, and my pack one, pick one was Elish Norn, 
Um, yeah. And it just sort of kind of worked out yeah. well with all the other nice uh, stuff that got passed to me. I got that angel that gives all of my artifact shroud and stuff passed to me. Um, you know, just all sorts of some good stuff there. Sadly, uh, I got second uh, in that draft, losing out to just uh, essentially gruel monster dragons and it just beat my face in <laughs> sort of style of play. <laughs> Big face beat in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, I had I had a blast, I, and I, I'm a little bit bitter still because um, where I was positioned, uh, my buddy that was drafting with me was like three or four seats down, so he's like opposite end of the table. Mm -hmm. uh, and so like the affinity stuff would slowly start to work, work its way over there. Uh, and you know he might he was actually uh, not doing the blue white style. I think he was doing uh, red blue uh, artifacts for him. Uh, okay. And the two cranial platings that oh. got open at the table, he got both of them. So it's really sad that uh, uh. I didn't get to see any in, in my deck because they never made it around the table for me. So. It's harsh. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I had a blast getting to draft the format. I got to see some cool different uh, decks get used. Um, so I, I like seeing the different archetypes and everything uh, getting used from what I've seen. But you, you've got to draft it a little bit more. So I'll let you kind of take over a little bit and tell some of your, done, your experiences. Sure. I think I've done like 10 drafts overall, like probably six or seven paper. And then I've done three online. Which you can actually go watch if you want. <laughs> uh, I'll be uploading the first one today, just after the podcast. So uh, I'll give you my YouTube in the end if you want to check those out. Um, but what I've found is that I have a lot of fun with this five color deck where you just have infinite removal. And the two best decks I've drafted, drafted have both been that. Um, one of them I actually thought was bad right away. I'm like, oh, this deck's terrible. How do I kill anyone? I'll leave two Akari, like the 4 4 flyer for five, which. It's really good. <laughs> I like two Akari and a, a what's it? That Rider. That's like the only creatures that attacked. Oh, wow. I'm like, oh, this might be trouble. Uh, the good part is I had 15 removal spells. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like four, yeah, 15 removal spells and a bunch of fixing. Just like a playset of Sun Lances, a playset of Tribal Flames, um, a Fiery Fall, and. One of each, the white removals, like there's Pillar of Sleepness, um, Arrest, and Oblivion Ring. Just had all these removal spells. <laughs> so I just killed everything and played a Hakari, you know, just one with that. Or like a Glenthawk Idol, I think. Mm. So, <laughs> it was a pretty sweet deck. I, I didn't expect it to be as good as it was, but I guess if your opponents just have zero creatures, um, yeah, you win. Yeah. So, th that was cool. <laughs> uh, I did another similar draft, another four color deck um you know this one not as much removal but had a bunch of bomb creatures just got ant queen got edric sar um and uh, creek with liege so <laughs> just kind of killing people with those just really fun decks for me you know not my opponents so much because i kill all their stuff and then you know just play a big dude right but you know it was fun for me um i've also like dabbled with the artifacts deck um, I had a red-white double strike deck, which was okay. I, I think that's probably my least favorite deck of the format. Mm -hmm. Like it's all right. Um, I think the, my favorite was probably the five color, but right after that, like the green-white tokens list, yeah. it's just really cool. It's just so fun to play. Yeah, I, I wish I could have drafted one of the token decks out there because they yeah. do look like they were so much fun. They're pretty cool. Scatter the seeds is a hell of a card. It says instant on it. <laughs> <laughs> it says instant on it. It's pretty good. But yeah, that's actually one of the cards you just have to watch out for. There's so often where I'll think, oh, is this a safe attack? No, it could have scattered the seeds, and then I'll just pass, and he'll, you know, play a scatter the seeds in the end of the turn. I'm like, yeah, okay, sure, dude. Yeah, just make your three one or three one ones. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Um, good job for you. Yay. <laughs> so, yeah. Did you? Were there any archetypes that you didn't really like though? That's something I'm interested in. I, I've talked to people who didn't like spirits. They didn't like playing against it or playing it? Just didn't like playing it or against it, really. Like, just um, didn't enjoy that it was in the draft format. I don't know. I played against it round one, um, yeah. and it was a very grindy uh, match. I mean, he got a lot of really good yeah. stuff passed to him, so, like, it, it, he was the only one clearly playing spirits, mm -hmm. um, and so he had pretty much all the stuff that he could hope for. Um from what was open um, 
I, I thought it was it was it was cool. Like it it was different than than you know some of the other decks that were out there. It was it was reminding me very much of like the Orzov style of like yeah. I'm just gonna sort of kind of dirtle a lot, extort a little Dude, bit too. here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I I think it's it's cool that there is that playstyle available for players that like that. Um, yeah, I drafted. But, I thought it was fun. I, I could see why people would be annoyed with it though. <laughs> So you keep getting your removal spells back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Once you've cast the same... Um, oh, shoot, that black common. I, I have one in my hand right now. Nameless Inversion. Once you've cast the same Nameless Inversion four times, somebody starts getting upset. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think a, a card I really underestimated as well is Waxmane Baku. Mm-hmm. Like, whenever you play a spirit, you put a key counter on it. You can pay one mana and remove any number of key counters to tap... X creatures. Yeah, I, that card's good. Mm-hmm. It, it's just better than any other tapper that I can think of. Yeah, it's very strong because you're gonna be you want to play spirit cards anyway. Like you want a, a lot of them. You have soul shift to get you more spirit cards back, and having a tapper that taps like four things in a turn if you need it to is so strong. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Now now I want to draft again. <laughs> <laughs> We'll do a draft. <laughs> yes, yeah. So it's it, it's definitely a fun format, and if for whatever reason you guys haven't had the opportunity to, just try one out. Like I, I think they're still yeah. doing phantoms on Magic Online for it, even right? Yeah, there's still should be fan. I hope there's phantoms still because I need to make more videos for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping there's still phantom drafts. I think there are. I, I think I saw like Chion playing phantom drafts after the most recent update, which is when they would have taken it out. So okay. I'm guessing it's still there. Yeah. So yeah, still chances for you guys to you you know your local game shop might have a couple packs left over. I don't know. So. You can still get some online as well. Mm-hmm. Like people bought boxes to sell, uh, not realizing just how big the print run was. So mm-hmm. I, I think it's still fine. Like if you if you bought boxes and you want to save them, that's fine. Like you're not going to lose your money or anything. But right. they didn't spike like uh, Modern Masters One did, yeah. which is a set that. It just went crazy, man. So it's just limited print run and such sweet cards. <laughs> mm-hmm. Cool. So that was kind of the the draft style with it. Um, so let's talk about some of the awesome stuff that that we opened. Like <laughs> um, I was saying, like pack one, pick one on my draft. I got Elish Norn, which is pretty good, which was sweet because I had I did not have one yet, and I just would like to have one for my collection. So that worked out well. Um, I also opened. Um, a co-select um, in that draft as well. Wow! Uh, but I just flipped that to the shop because I already have Emrakul, and so I'm like, I, I don't really care about having two Eldrazi's. I check He's with a cool commander. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. I I check with my uh, buddy who also uh, kind of shares a card pool with me, with me, and uh, he was like, Yeah, I don't really care about having it, and so I just kind of flipped it. Um, See, I got a a foil Kiki. Ooh. Um, so that's just sort of sitting sitting there, uh, waiting right now. Um, uh, extra bitter blossom I got because I already have a play set, uh, mm-hmm. and I got another one, and so I just gave that to my buddy that he can use in his sideboard uh, of his decks because he was playing uh, Grixis Twin for a while. Okay. Um, Interesting sideboard card for that deck. Just like a, a one of. You Super know. grindy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, got an extra noble, which I, I flipped that one. Yeah. Uh, just a couple of, of decent stuff. I mean, uh, I think <laughs> I got a Tezzerat as well. Um, but that was, I think that that was really it of like the stuff that I was really really happy with that I got. Did you pick up a box then, or? Yeah. Okay. So so my buddy and I uh, split a box. So it was both like with the draft and the uh, splitting of a sure. box together. We got some some good stuff. <laughs> so this is a really good value draft. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who passed all these cards to you? <laughs> Just getting everything good. Yeah, I I had a um, a similar experience, mm. except like more. I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd say this is about probably a box worth of cards. So first. Pack I opened, the very first one, draft one, pack one, pack one. Mm-hmm. To the back, it looks a like green mythic, and it has stars in its, <laughs> Gosh. its power toughness, so I just like got the slam a Tarmogoyf, pack one, pick one. Oh, oh. I was pretty happy about that one. <laughs> yeah. 
the order on the rest of these I don't really remember, but <laughs> as I recall, um, in a draft I was past a cryptic command, which is pretty sweet. What? This is the same draft I opened a foil fulminator mage, which I have dubbed the foil minator mage. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Gosh. Uh, and it, I think uh, there's a second draft I did. I had Elish Norn into All is Dust. Wow. That's for the draft. Wow. Um, yeah. <laughs> it was pretty sweet. The rest of these are like from loose packs. Yeah. I got like just if I won, you know, packs at FNM. Mm -hmm. If we get three normal packs, we can just trade them in for a Modern Masters pack. Or my parents bought me for some for my birthday. And actually, they bought me. It, it was like four packs or something. Mm -hmm. And of them, there's like a Bitter Blossom and Vendillion Click in it. <laughs> like, these are ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, just on like loose packs and stuff else I got. Um, there's a Splinter Twin, a Spell Skite. Two non-foil pulmonary mages. That's um, awesome. The Blink Moth Nexus, a Noble Hierarch, a Leyline of Sanity, and that's everything. But I guess I went and looked it up. I hadn't realized how much this actually was. It's like five hundred and sixty dollars. Yeah, that, that's it. That's a <laughs> that's a solid uh, set that's of cards really there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got I got pretty lucky with this set. I I, I have a friend who got luckier, like somehow, because I thought this was really good, but. Mm -hmm. He's on like double goy foiled cryptic, <laughs> two Karns. Like, no, oh, Justin, please calm down. Right? <laughs> you can stop. <laughs> that guy, that guy opened some crazy stuff in Modern Masters. But you know what? I feel like it's justice because neither of us have been anything good in every other set. Yeah. So yeah. We decided to go hot for Modern Masters. <laughs> <laughs> I was pretty happy with it though. Mm -hmm. It just kind of goes to show if if you were you know to. To spend some money in the set, you could, you know, get really paid off. But I've talked to other people who are like, yeah, I opened like a spell skite. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> like, oh, sorry, <laughs> <It's a> terrible <laughs> box. <laughs> so it, it's a pretty risky set, but it's really fun too. So if you want to draft it, I would get in there. Mm -hmm. Get in there. Get in there. Make it happen, guys. <laughs> um, no, no, I, th I think there's there are some good stuff, and I know there's some people that were disappointed with some of their pools and stuff, and. And like, I I mean, it sucks that not every card can be those those bombs, but uh, mm. there, there's still some decent uh, uh, rares in there that you can use for for commander and stuff like that, and uh, you know, ha think, have fun with. Sorry. Uh -huh. um, I think like the main difference between this one and the first Modern Masters isn't like the big rares; it's the small rares. Mm. So like, there's no mid tier rares, or hardly any. Yeah. It's either you get a twenty-five dollar rare or like a a dollar. Yeah, yeah. There's no middle ground here, other than like Blink Moth Nexus, I guess. Mm -hmm. Kind of like just rebuys a pack, value-wise. Right. But everything else is like, oh look, I got an Ant Queen. Woo. <laughs> All or nothing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hope for a remand in my own comments. <laughs> or you know, oh I got a, a noble forty dollars. Right. Like. There's no middle ground, which I think was like the the downfall here. The first one felt like it was a little too, you know, too much money in those packs because mm. people just opened them and didn't draft them. Right. Uh, and this one feels like there was just not quite enough. I don't know. Well, maybe Modern Masters three, they'll finally find yeah. that uh, that sweet spot. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, no drama, guys. Okay. Look, we've printed enough. Uh, now those of us who own our set need to, you know, be. <laughs> Reprint always, always reprint Tarmo Boy from Modern. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. So that's that's how Modern Masters was going. Um, so anything else with Modern Masters? Do you want to kind of talk a little bit about um, Origins real quick? Uh, it's time with some Origins. Okay, that's a cool set. Um, yeah, we're not gonna talk too much into it. We're not gonna sit there and go over every card and talk about drafts. So the first stuff. card is Kaithion. <laughs> <laughs> First card in white. Because <laughs> that's what we did in State of the Gathering, in case you guys yeah. were not around for that stuff. We would do those kind of release sets. But uh, just kind of want to go and just highlight a couple cards that you notice that you might be really excited for or stuff that you might think could be seen in other formats other than just standard. Sure. I have I have one. Okay. And it's, it's kind of a surprise, but I think it really is just because of how the deck works. Uh-huh. But Liliana might do something in modern. Ah, okay. So the Collected Company deck, there's an Abzan Collected Company deck yes. that could put this in their deck. Yep. Um, it's a little bit of a reach because it's double black, but, you know, it's modern, so the damage bases are pretty decent. Mm -hmm. 
And, like, part of their, you know, part of what they're doing is they're stacking their own creatures a lot. Yes. They can flip her pretty easily, and she's very powerful once you flip her. Mm -hmm. Just reanimating your voices and stuff is, is so good. And you can actually reanimate a piece of your combo if that's the kind of absent deck you're playing. Like, yeah. you can bring Kitchen Finks or something back right away. Mm -hmm. So, you know, flipping her could just win you the game sometimes. Yeah, and, and three mana, that's really easy to cord into. Yeah, you can cord into that. You can also hit it off Collected Company. Like, if if you got, you know, your Finks or whatever in your graveyard, you Collected Company, you see Liliana, Malira. Like, oh, good, Vistra Shear's already out. I win. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Success. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can also bring out the Vistra Shear, you can book up Malira. So, it, you know, it works for any piece of this combo. Yeah. Which just makes it feel like such an easy card. Or not easy, but a card that they could certainly just slip in. Like, as a two-of or something. So I actually think they might play this. <laughs> I, I would love to see that happen. Uh, yeah. I mean, Lily has always been kind of one of the uh, stronger planeswalkers when she is the kind of lower cost style. Yeah. Um, so this is going to be cool to see. And... I guess we should probably say what Liliana does. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Maybe they're not looking. Yeah. All right, so here it is. For one black black, you get a 2-3 lifelink. Not great. Not even close to great. <laughs> but whenever another non-token creature you control dies, exile Liliana, heretical hero, healer, and return to the battlefield transformed under her owner's control. So actually, if you... That's funny. If you steal this and then one of your creatures dies, then, uh... Yeah, the, whoever you stole it from gets the Planeswalker. <laughs> uh, really? Yeah. It's her owner's control, yeah. It's her owner's control, huh? Wow. <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah. Um... So if you do, you put a 2-2 black zombie creature onto the battlefield. Um, and then she's flipped, who is Liliana, Defiant Necromancer. 3 loyalty um, is a plus 2. Disc each player discards the cards, so the same as Liliana the Veil. That's a plus 2. Um, and here's the ability I'm actually caring about, is the minus X. So return target non-legendary creature card with converted mana cost X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. So I guess it doesn't work with Malira, because this has to be non-legendary. Just add. Yeah. Or Malira. <laughs> well, it's not as good as I thought, but I think it still might be good enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, still still pretty solid there. Um, yep. So I, I like that idea. I didn't think about that one. Um, I mean, one that I think a lot of people have been talking about uh, is the new blue card. Um, Days Undoing? Yes. Yeah. Yes. What, uh, what do you think here? Is this going to happen? Um, so... My buddy and I have been talking about it, and we're ready to, to throw it in uh, a burn deck uh, and, and just watch people cool. cry. Yeah, just see what happens. Uh, yeah, so it costs three mana. Each player shuffles his or her hand and graveyard into his or her library, then draws seven cards. If you do it during your turn, your turn ends. Uh, but, I, you know, being able to just burn people down and then reload it uh, with all these new burn spells again for next turn sounds pretty sweet. Yep. Um, but, you know, turn three when maybe you want to be doing something else might suck. But uh, a lot of time you sit there and burst down, and then you might be sitting there waiting for those last couple burn spells to, to kill somebody off. So I think this will be a good way to, to help out. Um, yeah. The other deck that people have been discussing it is Affinity. Um, you know, you sit there, dump your hand and everything, and if you can't kill them early on, well, guess what? I can reload my hand again. Uh, so, do it again. <laughs> so I, I think those are the two decks that we, we might see it in. I don't really see it being used in, in many other decks. Um, but I, I could be surprised by it, you know. Yeah. You, you never know what, what will happen uh, when people get their hands on the cards and start testing them out. Um, so I think that's going to be a, a, another one that people are going to see a lot of. Um, the, uh, let's see. Well, in Days on Doing, actually, Frank Carson had an article about it. Mm -hmm. Like, when he thought this would be good in Affinity, and he's... He said, you want it on the play versus decks like Jund. This is when he thought it was going to be really good because they're not really able to take advantage of the cards by turn two for them. Mm -hmm. Like, little thought sees maybe, and then get a Tarmor Wolf down or something. And then you, you flip their hand after you've already played everything. So yeah. you're up five cards, which is a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you want to be up five cards. That's, that's the rule. Um, in, in that kind of situation, you're not dying so quickly that them getting to take advantage of this first is a big deal. He, His thought, and I'm going with him because 
to, you know, in my opinion, he's just the best affinity player. Yeah. As thought as you don't want this if you're on the draw, because then they're actually, like, call guns commanding you before you cast this and stuff. Mm. And you're just not winning that game. Like, if, if they go even after two for winning you, that's yeah. really rough. So, I, I kind of like that. I think it's, like, a sweet cyborg card for this deck. And then, you know, you win game one, you don't bring it in for game two, but game three you bring it in, and you just have this huge huge advantage. Or, if, you know, if you lose the first game, you can bring it in for game two and, you know, try to get try to get in that way. I think it's kind of cool. I don't know if I want to devote a sideboard card or a sideboard slot just for that, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty narrow. So, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. It's a cool card, though. I think it could do some stuff. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Any other blue stuff that you, you saw? Um, I, I actually, you know, Talent of the Telepath, I think, is a cool idea. Um, okay. But I don't really see, you know, f four mana is expensive for it. Yeah. Um, so for those that aren't familiar with the card, I'll throw that up again. Is um, this for, like, an instant, maybe? Mm. I mean, I'm just thinking, like, the card that seems like it would replace is probably Jace, like Handsome Jace, and yeah. I just don't see anything better. Handsome Jace, of course, being the four mana one from Ravnica. <laughs> I, I was just use like Baby Jace, Little Jace, Handsome Jace, Broken Jace. <laughs> People usually get it, but <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, I, I like the idea of the card. I don't know if you know if you cool can, can see much of it. Uh, the other card that I I, I feel like we are going to be seeing though is this new green card. Uh, Cost X and a green. Do you know which one I'm talking about? This is the one that the Bloom players like. <laughs> yes. And Awakening. You got it. There it is. Free lands, guys. Yeah, um, this... Reveal the top X card in your library, get better. and you get to put all land cards from among those onto the battlefield tapped. And the rest Yay. of the your library in random order. And Spell Mastery. If there are two or more instant or sorcery cards in your graveyard, untap those lands. Yeah, it, it, if you have Spell Mastery, it, just, it has your amulet. A vigor for you. Yep. <laughs> if not, you have to do it yourself. <laughs> so I think this card might actually be really good. Yeah. I just don't want it to be. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm already at the point where I think the format would be better without Amulet Bloom. Yeah. Like it was a side layer or like a, a you know outlier something that's deck. yeah it was like an outlier deck kind of like the Gorius Vengeance which right. is apparently not so much an outlier anymore. It, it was just one of those outliers. It was just like, yeah, okay, weird combo players. You can have your fun. And then, you know, someone who builds decks really well looks at it and says, hey, I better can break this. Yep. And then they make it too good. <laughs> now we might have to ban it. Um, it just... These degenerate combos are not what modern is supposed to be about. Like, in fact, you can interact with... You just can't interact with these decks. Can you, you, how do you interact with someone's land drop? Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, it's right. really difficult. <laughs> You can't stop that from happening. <laughs> can't even, like, stifle amulet triggers or something. <laughs> I don't know. This one's tough. I, I think it's a cool card, though. Mm -hmm. Like, it's going to be Sweet and Commander, obviously, because everything else. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Origin's going to have some good stuff like that. Um, yeah, there's a lot of cool cards. Um, Evolutionary Bleep is pretty sweet, too. This could actually be a thing. It's not Survival of the Fittest. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> but... I mean, again, there's there's decks that are mm. kind of okay with sacking their creatures, and I mean, this is a pretty good value for sacking a kitchen fix or something. Yeah. Just go find a different creature. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, random creature from my deck in my hand. Cool. All right. <laughs> um, did you see the white uh, instant spell? Um, the uh, hollowed moonlight. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. It's uh. It's pretty good. <laughs> I I don't know if it's gonna make it to modern, mm -hmm. but there's a chance. Like, there are decks that just try to cheat those creatures in, and it kind of wrecks them. Well, I mean, we we look at our um, uh, we we were talking about the uh, uh, collective company deck. Sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot. There's this collective company too. Collective company. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> I draw a card and you don't get yeah. any of your creatures. Sorry, that does not work. Instead. They're exiled. You wanted that combo piece? Nope, sorry. You don't I get guess, that. I guess they just fail to find and put all the cards in the bottom, but that's still really good. Yeah. Uh, also you don't works, actually get to exile their creatures. <laughs> yeah. um, also works against uh, twin players. 
in the battlefield. Yeah. Because oh, yeah. any tokens that you generate or copies okay. of creatures, sorry, does not work. And I get to draw a card off it. Yeah. All right. This is a card. Yeah. So this could be a thing. Mm -hmm. Huh. I hadn't thought about twin, but yeah, this just hits a lot of stuff. Hits the vengeance deck. Hits um, like you said, twin and uh, and company. What else? Just any deck that's trying to go, uh, give some given into uh, umbrella rights. Just yeah. Gets as well. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, this is sweet. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Start getting your copies. Your yeah, foils. Living <laughs> end as well. Yeah, wow, it's just Rex living in. So, they just lose. So, so yeah, this is what you guys need to get. Pick this up. This will be a card. Okay? Huh. We figured it out now. Yeah, this could be a card. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get some of these. Um, I don't play white, but hopefully <laughs> turn them all away. <laughs> uh, the other card that I, n I notice uh, that I feel like we're going to be seeing some play of is our new Merfolk. Yes. Finally, guys. Wondering when you're gonna talk about this one. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a two cost, uh, two blue there. That's not gonna be too much issue. Uh, for a two two, it says <laughs> when he enters the battlefield, the harbinger of the tides. You may return target tap creature and opponent controls to their hand. Uh, you yep. may also pay two extra mana, and it can have flash. But you're or gonna, you're gonna have you can just control an aether vial. Exactly. You're gonna vial it in for two anyway. mana. So they're going to sit there and attack or whatever. You're going to vial this in, return their yeah. creature, and then you're going to swing in for lethal, and it'll be great. This card is very good. Yeah. That's fact right uh, there. It's been a while since we've had a, a new merfolk that we're able to play. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy about that. So, I'm, you know. I, 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 so far, it's like, you know, we're around that three, four cards that we're going to be seeing. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a couple more, though. There's at least one other that I think is going to see some play. All right, what else? Uh, a Harbor Jones hides is sweet. I'm really excited. I'm going to build Morpho now. <laughs> Album Pile Driver is now legal in Modern. Oh, I forgot about that. I think this. I, I don't know if it's going to be as good as it is in Legacy because the Legacy deck is very different from any Modern Goblins decks. But man, I play against Modern Goblins decks. I do not want to see a Pile Driver. No. <laughs> this is scary. Yeah, protection from blue, so guys. Cool. Yeah, pro and, blue. And he gets pumped uh, by plus two for each other attacking goblin. Yeah, so he's a one, two for two? Yeah. One, two for two. And he gets plus two plus two for each other attacking goblin. So this is, I mean, this is also, I think he's going to be good in standard. Mm -hmm. Like just, you know, goblin, like Foundry Street Denizen into this, into um, Rabble Master. Rabble yeah. Master. <laughs> yeah, that seems fair. Yeah. <laughs> How about you take five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten? <laughs> I know. Oh, it's nine. How about you take nine? <laughs> that's so stupid. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. That's a little too much damage, so I'm a little worried about that, too. Um, do you see anything else for modern here? Um, see, like, Tainted Remedy? That could be a combo with um, Beacon of Immortality, as the one people have been talking about. Like, oh, okay. Maybe some deck runs Tainted Remedy Beacon for their win, <laughs> but I don't see it. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's maybe a casual thing. Yeah. It's sweet and casual, though. That's so cool. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that's like five cards right there. Yeah, it's a lot, yeah. Um, this is a lot for a core set. W and, well, even, too, with some of our recent sets, like, we're, we're getting, like, maybe, you know, two or three from each new set that actually are yeah. going to be getting used in, in decks and stuff. Um, yeah. This feels more like Konzatark here. Yeah. Which was just All so cards. full. <laughs> yeah, this is so full of modern, like, staples now. Yes. I mean, the, the, the entire Fetchland cycle, like, whoa. Mm -hmm. So good. Um, I guess maybe, I don't know, I guess we have, um, I was going to say Artificer's Epiphany, but um, the one where you just discard an artifact instead is still legal. I think that's better. Mm -hmm. So... I can't remember what it's called. <laughs> okay. um, but that's you know a good a good mix of cards. Origins is going to be coming out soon, guys. Pre-release mm -hmm. is next weekend, um, so keep your eyes go, open for some cool stuff. Go play some Tota Giant. You know you want to. Yeah, yeah, make it happen. <laughs> yeah. um, but that was it with the origin stuff. Uh, did want to give a rundown of some of the GPs that has, has happened recently. Um, since we've had at least three modern GPs uh, over the last... Actually, 
I have one more. Oh, he's got one more? Yeah, I got one more. All Sorry. Alright. Right. Hey, Sword of the Animist. This I is... Okay, do you know what this one, one does? No, I missed this one. Alright, all right, this one's sweet. So it's two mana, it's an equipment. Equip cost is two. Uh, equipped creature gets plus one, plus one. And whenever that equipped creature attacks, you get to rampant growth. What? Yeah. <laughs> you just go search your library for a basic put it into play. Okay. <laughs> hmm. This thing? Yeah, just whenever it attacks, not even deal damage. Just yeah, no, it's whenever it attacks. Huh. So gross. Like, if you put this in a two color deck, you just get like five lands or something. <laughs> I don't know if it's actually good enough, but it's pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah, that is cool. All okay, right. now I'm done. Alright, alright. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, so the modern GP is done for Season 3. Yeah. There's no more modern GPs until Season 4. Um, and we'll talk about when those are going to be taking place. But there's been a few. We've had Charlotte, we've had Singapore, and we've had Copenhagen. Um, yeah. And what's been nice is that we've had a different deck win. Yeah, I guess we have, haven't we? It, is, it has not been the same deck every time. So, okay. uh, are we starting with Charlotte and work our way? Yeah, we'll Those do them in so order. Okay. So, Charlotte, Copenhagen, Singapore. Okay. Um, so, Star Cities put on the Charlotte event. Um, yep. And uh, first place was kind of uh, the new take on the collective company. Uh, style and uh, I've seen a couple of people start running this one of the guys at our shop runs this version um, it is the L's version yep yeah so I, it's, I don't know about four quarter calling but uh, I don't know it's, 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 it's pretty well I mean you get you just tap your, your, your mana dorks for, for mana mm -hmm. uh, and you can cast cord for almost anything like for free yeah so it's I, do, I I want some number. But you don't you think four is too many? I don't know if, yeah, I don't know if you need four. Four like there is a cost of putting these in your deck. Mm. Maybe four is the right number, maybe it's that good. Maybe yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he wants five. <laughs> he's not allowed, but you know. <laughs> he's he's not allowed at five, but you know. <laughs> he could dream. <laughs> um so it's it's a it's a pretty cool deck. Um as, as it goes, like I said, there's there's a lot more uh, players that are choosing this one over kind of the podless pod style yeah. uh, that was running around for a while. So, um, but like you'd expect, it's got all of the the mana dorks in there. Elvish Arch Druid there, um, yep. you know, Elves Champions, or the Mystics, the Visionaries, Eternal Witnesses, like the things that you you'll want to like cord into. Um, Very true. You know, the, oh yeah, they've got Heritage Druids in there, which is you know, why would you not want all the, all the mana? Well, I mean, Heritage Druid is now a twenty three dollar card. Is so. it really? Wow. It is an uncommon from Morning Tide. Oh, gosh. Um. <laughs> Six years is all it takes for an uncommon. It's <laughs> <laughs> ridiculously priced. I guess it's longer than that now. It's like eight years or something, but still. <laughs> That's such a ridiculous price. Yeah, yeah. This I I kind of have expected it to be in Origins, mm. based somewhat on the price, but it wasn't in there. Sadly. Also, sadly. I mean, it's like an L set. Like, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, but but the deck itself is so quick. Like, yeah. You, the way that you accelerate out and get <laughs> your your board presence is is insane. Um, and and you can, I mean, you sit there and you you. Turn one, play a forest, and play an Elvish Mystic. Like, all right, sweet. You've already got two mana. Like, you're not scared, are you? <laughs> <laughs> you're you're going to be collected company very quickly here. So it's 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 it's, it's, it's scary uh, with how quickly you can just kind of overwhelm something. Can you can you do it on turn two somehow? I don't think you can. Um, no, I don't. I can th see how you get three mana, but you can't see how you get four. I, yeah, I don't think there's a, a way that you can cheat it out. Yeah, um, you can do it on turn three. Yeah, but no, no turn two collected companies. No. Oh, <laughs> sorry, not that good. <laughs> yeah, it's not that good. Don't worry about it. Uh, one, two, three. Well, we. Okay, if you have shrine out. Okay. This, um, I like where this is going. All right, hold on. <laughs> stuff. 
Madison's this is the worst stuff. time to try to try to do, do, do Okay, alright, okay, here it is. Here's okay. it is. You have Forest. Okay. Forest, Elvish, Mystic, right? Yeah. And then you're playing Heritage Druid. Okay. And what? For the other. Like Nettle Sentinel? And yeah. then you tap make three mana. Uh-huh. Play your Nykthos. Activate your Nykthos. Yeah. And then you have Devotions three. Yeah, you have four mana. There you go. I think I did that right. I, that sounds about right. It sounds about right. It sounds sweet. <laughs> so anyway, the deck is great. <laughs> like it's a, it's a strong deck. Um, like it's sideboard, Bow Nylea, Fracturing Gust, Dismembers, uh, Beast Within, Reclamation Sage, Fangs. Interesting. I ran Hushwing in there, huh? Okay. Hushwing. I guess because you can collect it, you can port it out. So. Yeah. I don't know. It's cool though. Smell sky. Yeah. So it's a it's a solid just kind of. Heavy I have a friend. Deck. Yeah, I've actually got a friend who's been running this a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, he kind of played it for a bit and then went back to burn. But <laughs> it was fun to play against. I was, I was playing my Timur twin deck, mm -hmm. trying to get good with it just against this deck. And I think it's a weird matchup, so I don't know how much it helped. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> lightning bolt's really good. Electrolyze is really really good. Electrolyze is great. <laughs> Yeah, it just uh, kind of destroys this deck. Um, Spell scan on the other hand is really, really, really good. Yeah, my uh, friend played it at the uh, Open in Maryland, uh, and he said he had a real hard time playing against uh, Tron because you know red green okay. Tron they're just like Pyroclasm, just constantly nuking. Yeah, the board. Uh, and I can see how that would just get super frustrating super quickly. But you mean like double Archdruid to live through it? Yeah, yeah, it's tough. Uh, the Gorm Coil is probably pretty hard to beat, too. Right. I would think. <laughs> and, like, Oblivion Stones. And just yeah. Like, it's tough. It's a tough matchup, but it's, a, it's a cool deck. Yeah, a lot of routes. I, I, don't, I mean, that's not the matchup he was looking to beat. I think um, a lot of it, you know, it's not a good matchup versus John. We also tested that matchup. I won, I think I won every game, hmm. so it's not good there. Um, but it looked like it was good versus Twin. And he certainly has some game versus affinity with our Reclamation Sage main deck and just how easy it is to go find. And then as a sideboard, he's got two Fracture Gusts as well. Um, the second Reclamation Sage and, like, Kitchen Fix is actually really good versus that deck. Yeah. <laughs> just trade for two other things and gain four. Mm -hmm. So I could see some game there. Like, there's quite a few decks that I think this thing can beat. I, I'm not entirely sure how it won the event, though. Like, it just doesn't look like a GP winning list. And I don't think we'll see a repeat. But it's cool that it happened. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I think it's it is cool to see that variety. And and you look at the other list though of the top couple decks. Like yeah. there was two blue red twin decks. Okay, that makes sense. Twin is still in there. There was an yeah. affinity deck in there, uh, and there was a burn deck in there. Those are the kind of go to decks that have been in the format for modern for a while since like the banning of pod and stuff. They've been consistently yeah. doing well. Um, Absent Company and Elves are kind of the newer <laughs> guys on the block. That was cool. They made it in the top eight. And then we had the two fringe decks. Yeah. Him and Gorio's Vengeance. Uh, yes. <laughs> so. Excellent. <laughs> so why don't we talk Ad Nauseam first? Sure. Okay. This deck. Friendship Reef? Is. Sweet. <laughs> so so the, the objective is. You have all this stuff to prevent you from losing the game. Yeah. Um, Phyrexian Unlife, Angel's oh, Grace, that yeah. sort of stuff. You cast your Ad Nauseum, draw your whole deck uh, into, like, Lightning Storm. Yep. And then you just kill somebody with a Lightning Storm. <laughs> it's, it, it is a fringe deck. It's so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> but... <laughs> It got fourth it's place at this so GP. Awesome. Yeah, it's... it's this card. All right, all right. I've never seen this before. <laughs> One red, red, cool. Landing starters X damage target complete trigger player X is three plus the number of charge counters on it. Discard a land. Put two charge counters on Lightning Storm. You may choose a new target for it. <laughs> Any player may play this ability, but only if Lightning Storm is on the stack. Who made this card? <laughs> what are you thinking? <laughs> How drunk do you have to be? Uh, like, let's have a let's have an instant with charge counters. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Seems fair, right? 
I don't know if there's more than just Lightning Storm of that, but this is such a sweet wing con. Yeah, no, that 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 <laughs> is the the uh, the wing con <laughs> in there. That is so awesome. Uh, I know now the the um, those are the Vault Kim and you games. The the sideboard does have Laboratory Maniac though. Yeah. So you sit there, be able to get Laboratory Maniac, and all right, here's uh, Ad Nauseam. I'm draw my whole deck. I win. Yay! Yay! Look at that, guys. It was cool. It did fun thing. <laughs> oh. This deck's <thing's> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Other has, has one Laboratory Maniac. Well, I guess you're just gonna drag a whole deck anyway, right? Yeah. I, that that only works with the Frexian Unlife kill, though. Right. Right. Huh. Okay. This deck's awesome, man. <laughs> or Leilana Sanctity just to be a bad person. Mm -hmm. Man, he's playing Darkness? Nice. Wow. That, black Fog? The Black Fog, okay. Yeah. <laughs> man, this guy's this guy's hero. Well. Hmm. Darian Elderfield. Well done, sir. Well done. Yeah, so... <laughs> Fringe deck, making it in there, ad nauseum. So in case you guys want to troll some people and, and mm. have some fun uh, playing a game of Magic with yourself, this is the deck to use. Yeah, it, only you. It, one person plays this game. Yeah. <laughs> Three Pact of Negation, make sure. <laughs> I really don't want to go to my next turn. Let's just win. <laughs> yeah, so that that is uh, huh? one of the Fringe decks that made top four. Huh? Good, on, so uh, good on there. The other one. This deck has been seeing a rise like no other deck lately. Yeah. This is true. Now, I, I've played it previously uh, at okay. other events before, you know, the GP Charlotte were, and now it's kind of everywhere. So I at least was familiar with the deck. I knew what yeah. the objective was. Um, I've had a match against it as well. It's an awful matchup for John. <laughs> you don't want to hit this one. They just kill you on turn two, and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> Yeah, I died on turn three. My turn two, his turn three, uh, yeah. in the open, or, or at the uh, uh, invitational qualifier there over the weekend. Um, okay. And the objective is to use cards mm -hmm. like faithless looting, um, you know, tormenting boys. boys, things like this to throw away grizzle brand, to throw away your. World's Fire Worm, throw away your enraged Cyclops over here and yeah. keep them into play. With it Royal needs to Vengeance. be it needs to be Gristlebrand or Bobo. Yes, generally Gristlebrand to start and then Bobo later. Mm -hmm. You can you can through the breach a World's Fire Worm. I did lose to that as well. Yeah, and through the breach is the other way, and I lost to the Gristlebrand um, into the through the breach uh, for Igmos. Okay, you lost the fun way. <laughs> he threw lands at your face. <laughs> yeah, he's like, all right, here's Grizzle Brian. I'm going to pay 14 life and draw 14 cards. And then I'm going to remove these Simeon Spirit Guides. And I'm going to cast Esprit Ritual. And look, here's my Through the Breach. Sweet, look at this, guys. Now here's my Porygmos and Rage. Here's all these lands. Yay! Yay, you lose. <laughs> Turn three. Uh, now, the, the deck is a glass cannon, though. It, yeah, really. It has those kills where you can just blow somebody out on turn three, but it is it is rocky if you cannot get the right pieces. Uh, yeah, um, I, I will say like part another part of this deck is, is through nourishing shoal. You can draw more cards, so you don't always get all the cards you need off 15, or fourteen cards. So you get to XL nourishing shoal plus world spine worm. Yes. Gain, was it like eleven life? Eleven life. It's mana cost. Yeah, mana cost. So you just gain eleven life, and then you get to do it again. Um, so you two for one yourself, but then you get to draw seven cards, and then you know by then hopefully you have your your Barbar Agmos and Rage plus some way to get it into play, and then you get three lands at the men. <laughs> this this deck's pretty cool. Uh, I would recommend that if you want to play it, you do it soon. It is another one of the decks I think Wizards kind of has their eye on for maybe banning something out of, just because it is a deck that breaks the rules <laughs> of modern, and now it does it somewhat consistently apparently. <laughs> yeah. Interestingly enough, um, I don't know what changed though. Uh, well, I think it's a lot of people are not as familiar with the uh, deck. Sure. Um, and I don't know. It's just the deck looks very similar to what uh, I faced before. 
Mm -hmm. So I don't know what is. I I don't I don't know what is what is changing. You know what? I've got a list. I so I played that guy in Vancouver, uh -huh. and I I took a picture of his list. <laughs> so I'm gonna yeah I'll go actually pull it up right now. I can't show you guys, but I'll go find it. Yeah, so then we can look. Just what's different and see. I've done this before. <clears throat> Hopefully I've still got it. <laughs> I think I do. Yeah, dude, here it is. All right, all right. So here's the difference. Okay. Uh, it's hard to see. So he's got the four World Spine Worms, four Russell Brands, four. Yeah, same list so far. He had a time of need. Yeah, the literal only card that's changed is um, he's got Metamorphose in this list. I don't think. Oh no, they both have Metamorphose. Yep. This one's got four instead of two. Ah, uh, okay. So the difference is Noxious Revival and Tormenting Voice. So practically nothing. Right. So this is always good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, I don't know. This is weird. <laughs> Oh, well, it works, right? <laughs> it, yeah. Um, so, so this is when we started to really see the rise of the deck, though. Um, yeah. After, after Charlotte. Um, was there any the other decks that uh, caught your eye that you wanted to talk about? Maybe in the top sixteen or, or anything like that. Um, there's some burn. There's an Ebzen Company deck. Mm -hmm. Oh, I guess, and then Lantern Control. Oh, that's also when we started <laughs> to see the Lantern Control. I don't know how this deck works. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's I think it's one of the decks where you like you look at the top player of each player's library and you just decide if they're gonna draw it or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this looks like a lockout deck. There's like three people's main deck. Um, so I I saw LSV play the deck. Okay. Um, on on Channel Fireball, he, you know they release videos every so often. Because yeah. when I saw this deck, I was and I was trying to prepare for for the event. I was like, all right, I don't know. I've never seen the deck before. So I need to at least watch from his point of view to understand what the deck is supposed to do so I can have some semblance of an idea of what I need to do against it. Um, and it is a lockout deck. You, you sit there, you, you know, you've got your, your needles out, you've got your lanterns, you've got all these ways to look at your opponent's top card and say, okay, do I want them to draw this, yes or no? Nope, all right, I'm going to make them discard it. And just keep sitting there and, yeah. and cycling away all their cards. You've got... Uh, in Inquisitions, you've got the tax stands, you got the rest, so any cards that you put in their hand that you're like, you know what, sure, you can have that card. Oh, just kidding. You, you don't get that card anymore. I'm going to strip it. <laughs> Actually, you don't. <laughs> um, and it, it's just completely rude. You know, surgical Extraction's in there, so you can just completely siphon them off, and, and um, you know, you've got four ensnaring bridges, so they can't attack you either, and, and really, you just win by deck out. Ugh. It's, it's a lockout, yeah. deck out, way to win and it is a <laughs> a really frustrating way to, to lose because you know you're running the three spell sky that's the only creature you run to you don't yeah. you don't need to run anything else um and it's got the academy runes in there so any of these artifacts that you've got that you're sacking and sending to the graveyard and stuff uh get to come back um like the the pyrite spell bomb uh, is in there to help deal with some creatures uh, that yep. might get onto the battlefield. You've got the abrupts in there. Like, it, it's it's a cool deck. Um, it's another one of those decks where if you yeah. want to play by yourself, this is the deck for you. <laughs> yeah, but this one is a little different. So the other deck, you just do your thing and you win. Yes. Fine. <laughs> you just wait. <laughs> this deck, you just wait. <laughs> When are you going to draw your whole deck? I don't know, man. It's going to be like 20 turns from now. Yeah, it's, it's a slow, methodical, uh, grindy uh, game. But it's a very <laughs> no annoying deck. I'll put it like that. It's an annoying yeah, deck. That sounds about right. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It says, oh, you got a creature. It's too bad I got Ensnaring Bridge and you can't yeah. attack me. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's like, oh, that awesome card that could probably help you. No, I'm going to just send it to the graveyard. I don't think it can help you. <laughs> uh, Jeez, this is rude. Yeah. Oh man. All right. So rude deck number one. Mm -hmm. I yeah. I just never looked. Um. I guess a cool one here is Grixis Control. Uh. Patrick Chapin's version. He's got four cryptic commands, and it just makes me so happy. Hmm. Just four of them, man. He's like, I'm gonna play them all. I want to do it. <laughs> cryptic command's fun. Mm -hmm. For 
the people who play it. <laughs> <laughs> For those that do not, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Also pretty notable is like every blue deck just has four snapcasters now. Yep. So it's something to keep in mind. That card's just dumb. Dumb expensive. Dude. But um yeah. I, I think that's all I'm really looking for from this one. Cool. And we just move on to Copenhagen. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Cool. So Copenhagen, we're just I think we're just looking at top eight here. Um this was well, it was in Copenhagen, which is where is that? I don't know. Uh, Co Copenhagen is in Sweden. Sweden, okay. I, I, that's what I thought, but I didn't want to say so. Be wrong. Yeah. It's never a good, never a good. <laughs> <story>. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so are you looking at the the whole top sixteen, or you just want to cover top eight? I think just top eight. Oh, this is top sixteen deck list. Okay. Yeah. We we uh, can just look at top eight if you. Yeah, want. we can just skim through them all. Um, I think the big news here is is Marfolk one. Yes, it did. Which is interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, not the deck I usually pick to win a GP, but I think it's one of the decks that can do it. Just you know, it's tier two, so it's not gonna get there a lot of the time. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But it definitely has that uh, surprise factor. Uh, and, yeah, and, and at the event that I went to, um, 11th place was a Merfolk deck as well. So, okay. so it's it, 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 it for whatever reason, all the the kind of not not the top tier decks are starting to to progress more, and and I think it's it's helping that like decks like these creature based decks like Merfolk and stuff are able to to be in the format now that Pod is is gone. Yeah. Go away, Pod. <laughs> um, you were mean. Do you know how to use the top eight? Uh, yeah, just uh, click on the... Um, well, up at the top, it's got the Grand Picks uh, Copenhagen 2015, where it says okay. post, post it in, and then it'll be Aha. right there. Cool. Okay. Um, I guess we'll just do the top 16 ones, since I'm already here. Or are you already also here? I I'm at top eight right now. Okay. I'm at top eight now, too. <laughs> All right. Uh, Maybe. <laughs> well, I was just showing off the, the Merfolk one. It, it's a very straightforward uh, Merfolk, but this is, you know, again, going for the uh, um, blue-white in a way. Um, yeah. It, it's it's not blue-white like most of the blue-white list because it's not running the paths and stuff like that and the main board and everything, um, and it's only run, running the uh, hubs in there. Yeah. Um, Okay. So it's basically running. It, it's basically a regular mono blue version. Uh, you know, this is the one that is running the relics in the main board. Um, I've thought about it in mine too, and I've tested it out a couple times. It, it's nice. You get extra draw with it. You can disrupt some of those players. Like if you're playing mm -hmm. against uh, the um, decks that are focused on their graveyard, uh, it, it works out great. Um, so that that was cool to see uh, that deck do well. Um, Scape Shift, though, again, it's it seems to be the time of fringe decks. Yeah, there was a time Scape Shift was like tier one, though. Yeah, but it's, it's I mean it's it's, it's falling awesome. off a lot yeah. more, and now it's sort of in that I guess what tier two, tier two point five. Sure. So, um, th there is at least somebody at my shop that is playing it, so I get a little bit more practice with it. Um, right. But it's. I was playing it for a while. I actually really like this deck yeah, still. It is, it's a cool deck. I mean, you're, the objective is you get lands, kill people with your. Um, you know. Your kill Valkut. Them, yeah, <laughs> you kill them with your lands. That's, yep. that's really how, how, you, how you do it there. So. Yep. You get a Valkut out, and you have six mountains coming to play all at once. Yep. And then they die. Bam, 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 bam. <laughs> uh, also, German underscore DK says Copenhagen is in Denmark. 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 <laughs> it says Denmark. I assume he means Denmark. Wow. Right. <laughs> I can believe him. I'll believe him. You you know what his I mean the last part of his name clearly means Donkey Kong, so he's a trustworthy fellow. He's exactly. Hey, how could he lie to us? Like <laughs> Um So did you see the uh uh next list, the uh Jun list there? And how uh, how does that list compare to yours? I'm looking at it now. So he's got two Tassiger, two Finks main deck. I don't have either of those. I have one Tassiger. Okay. Oh, this is no Dark Confidant. This is interesting. So the general consensus for Jund is you want four Dark Confidant because it's the reason to play the deck. Mm -hmm. And he's not playing any. 
It's a little interesting. He's he's closer to like the Abzan deck, where it's just kind of play these threats. Yeah. Um, it's more of a board control deck or board. Uh, what do you call that? Stuff on board deck. Board presence. <laughs> Board presence, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what do you think of his Bitter Blossom? And he's got one in main. One main deck? It's cool. I mean, it's a really grindy card. Mm. I think if he's going to be in the mirror for Jund... No, I... Man, I just want Dark Confidant. <laughs> it's Dark kidding? Confidant. He's like minus one Tassiger, minus a land. In Bitter Blossom? <laughs> I don't know. I, I think it's cool. He's done some interesting things. Mm. This is different from mine, though. Um, he's also on two Ghost Quarter, which is cool. Yeah. This is a little bit of an outdated deck. The um, the current Junless are running like Fulminator's main deck now. Yeah, which is is cool. He's got the four on the board. Yeah, he's got four in his sideboard. But, like with Tron and Amulet Bloom just being as popular as they are, you just need him now. Mm -hmm. Like that's what I'm doing. <laughs> There's a Tron and an Emuel player at my uh, my shop, so I have to play Fulminator's main deck. You've got to be ready. <laughs> yeah, I I mean that's another one of the reasons I think you know maybe Amulet might if, if Amulet has another really big result, I think they might get something banned out of that deck. Mm -hmm. Just it's everywhere. It's just so many. <laughs> yeah. But it's it's to the point where we're forced to run main deck hate, yes. which is what, yeah. something I don't really like. Um, other than that, this deck looks pretty normal. Like he's got, um, he's got a normal amount of fetches. Usually we see like one wooded foothills, three bloodstained mires instead of two of each, but that's fine. Um, yeah, everything else is pretty much normal. It's just the uh, the bitter boss in main and no bobs. Just a little little preference that you yep. have. Cool. Um, the other list here. This is the more familiar blue white merfolk. Um, it, oh, two merfolk really... decks in the top eight. Yeah, Mer merfolk oh. has been climbing up. <laughs> Like huh. for, for for at least for Copenhagen, it was like all okay. all about the merfolk. And what huh. was cool too, I remember, I think it was Copenhagen. I remember watching um, round eleven or twelve. Uh, there was a blue white merfolk mirror matchup. <laughs> okay, that's new. Which is cool. You like <laughs> never see that. Um, yeah. But I that's... mean, just looking at the land base here, this is the one that's running uh, the flooded strands. Uh, you know, the the coast in there, hollowed fountain. And the four um, path oh, in nice. in the main, so yeah, um, makes me sad. I didn't hold on to my Wonder Wine hubs. Mm -hmm. Paid three. Oh, that really? was like oh. five bucks. Sure, that's good. <laughs> no, that was uh, they went up a lot. <laughs> um, and and one of the reasons why people are r running blue white merfolk over just the mono blue is the better access to sideboard cards like Rest in Peace, Sony Science, and Kataki. Like, blue, yes, you've got some good stuff, but like having a little bit more interactions like yeah. this, it, it does help. The white sideboard cards are the best. Sony Silence and Rest in Peace specifically are just so freaking powerful. Mm -hmm. They just do so much. Um, it's interesting, he's got Sony Silence and Kataki. Yeah. So he's really ready for the Infinity matchup. Which which makes me wonder, like, it, maybe in, in some areas in Europe that it is such a, a big thing. Yeah, it could be. So. Hmm. This is still a cool deck. I, I think um, Merfolk, like you said, it's a rising star. And I mean, they have another good creature coming. Yes, <laughs> they do. I, I, I think it'd be cool to see Merfolk as a tier 1 deck. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's quite there yet, but it's close. Yeah, it's, it's getting there. Yeah, um, and you can des uh, easily overwhelm people. Um, mm -hmm. uh, my buddy is is has the blue white version, and he's been testing out the uh, blue green with um, uh, cord or not cord uh, collective company. Um, oh, okay, just company merfolk. Yeah, so you sit there, you swing in to attack, and then all right before damage, uh, activate. Yeah. All right, here's two more lords for extra damage. Gross. Uh, and then he, he also gross. runs uh, Simic Charm in there uh, to, yeah. to give all the stuff hexproof, to bounce something, to give it plus yeah. three, plus three. So, huh? It's that's a cool deck. I haven't heard of that one before, but yeah, yeah, that's, I like the company seems really good. Yeah, so that's something we're we're testing around, and yeah. I mean, it, it's not as protective as say the blue white because you don't have access to pass, you don't have extra removal, right. and it's it's a little bit more rocky. A little bit more all in with the blue green 
style. It's just more explosive, though. Yeah, it's just it's just <laughs> cool things you can do with it. Huh. Um, Everybody wants to play a collecting company, right? It's so expensive now. I I was debating about picking some up when they were like fifteen, and now they're like forty bucks or something. What? I think they shot up real. Again? Oh man. Yeah. Um, I need to look now because I was trying to get some. <laughs> <laughs> um, some of the other decks, like this is Grixis Twin, or I'm sorry, uh, Grixis Control. It's just. It's it's another straightforward. Here's some removal. Here's some, you know, counter spells. Only three cryptic commands. Yeah, only three that in this one. It's not as good. <laughs> uh, and then of course in our top eight we have to have a twin deck. Uh, obviously. You know, as, <laughs> as you would expect. Uh, yeah. It is it is the Grixis, uh, twin though. So. so it yeah, be, I think uh, you're command it's a, inquisitions. They, they, they just look, kind of look the same at this point. The Grixis decks, like, mm -hmm. they're just kind of splashing black for Tassiger. Yeah. Although, oh, this one isn't playing any Tassigers. Yeah, I thought that was weird with with that twin, but... Yeah. He's playing Colgan's Command, one, and, and two Inquisitions. Inquisitions. And and I mean, he's got the uh, Tassigers in the board. Like, two in okay. the board. But, I don't know. To each their own. He's also got Go yeah. for the Throat and then and everything. Another Colgan's Command in the, in the board, but... I don't know. Just okay. wants to be like, hey, look, I'm 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 twinning out. Look, it's just it's. Uh, I'm Grixis you know. too. Yeah. Look at me. <laughs> um, I'm Mr. Meeseeks. <laughs> and then we've got uh, Grixis Delver. Okay. Yeah. This is a cool deck. Uh huh. That's what my my buddy just switched back over to to playing to Delver. Uh, Delver, because he was playing it before Tasker was out. Back when. Uh, oh, okay. You know, you could draw all the cards for free. Um, yeah. And well, they, it was a little too good then. Yeah, they banned it, and, and now uh, he, he likes this version a lot, because he, he was playing uh, Twin for a while, and then Grixis Twin, and now he's, yeah. you know, back to, to this this deck. So Back to Delver. Back, back to, to the Delver. Magic. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah, I like that in the Delver deck, you don't have to run Deceiver Exarch and Pester Might. Mm -hmm. Well, Which are bad creatures, he, uh, he, I'll be honest. He is uh, playing super spicy sideboard with his Grixis Delver. Uh, with twin in the board. So, no. <laughs> so, so so game two, he's like, hey, guess what? Surprise! I, I just beat you with twin. I'm actually a twin deck. Yeah. <laughs> no. How did you do it? <laughs> All right, that's pretty funny. Yeah, just just for the just for the lulls. Just um, for the lulls. Yeah. I just want to see a look on someone's face if they get twinned out. Yeah. <laughs> but I thought you were Delver. <laughs> you thought wrong. <laughs> I was like, I am Delver. And he just walked away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alright, so have you seen the Death and Taxes in Modern? I have. A friend of mine runs this deck. Okay. Well, there's something similar anyway. Alright. Um, I have yet to play against this. Um, okay. I didn't realize that it made top 8. Uh, yeah. And my my buddy who plays the Delver now played against it uh, at the uh, event in Baltimore. Um, okay. And it's, it's a he, that's when he was playing Collective Company. It um, is unfriendly. It is. <laughs> it is. Especially towards a Collective Company deck. <laughs> yeah. It is, it is not fun to play against. Uh, yeah. Even Mind Sensor is annoying in there. You, yeah. you can beat people down with the golems. Like you've got the Flicker Wisp in there. Um, it it's it's scary. Um, yeah, he doesn't seem to have it here, but I'm going to warn everyone about something, an interaction with this deck and your fetch lands. So, we all know Leon, Leon and Arbiter works, you got to pay two to fetch. If you crack fetch, and you pay two, and they flicker their Arbiter with Restoration Angel, or something, you have to pay two again. Wow. So, watch out, okay? Because <laughs> <laughs> you be could careful. just be wasting your fetches. <laughs> yeah, you might just not have a land, and all he did was put a 3-4 on to the battlefield. So his clock goes up and is better and you don't get your land. <laughs> Watch out for that. Yeah. <laughs> Just letting everybody know. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a it's a good deck. Um yeah. you know, you can you can overwhelm people pretty quickly and you've got some nice interactions, uh, even your sideboard, uh, because you've got the best color for boards, is all these yep. white spells um are in there, so um it's cool. It's a cool deck, and you know I wouldn't mind seeing a little bit more of it. I love this. This like we could have a bunch of different creature decks right now. Yeah. Um, 
so. The thing is about a lot of these creature decks is they have to be able to compete with the combo. Mm -hmm. I think we'd have a better format if we didn't have to worry so much about these combo decks. What? I'm really just advocating for some bannings here. Uh, yeah, that's what it sounds like. <laughs> Sounds you can either unban or ban some stuff, or unban my Bloodbraid L, please. Oh no, <laughs> keep that going. Look, no, no, I... Jace, he can come off the ban list too. <laughs> what, what do you want off the ban list, Damon? I'm happy with with how things are right now. Yeah, um, you want all these combo decks? Uh, f for the time being, I'm okay with it because they haven't been getting first all the time. Yeah, they're, they're yeah. still. I I feel like a as the format is sitting with such a diversity, like. We're seeing fringe decks like, you know, death and taxes and modern make a topic. Yeah. Like we're seeing these these very strange decks make it in there where we wouldn't normally be seeing it. So I, for right now, until it becomes too, too, too much, too much with with all the bloom and all of the vengeance all the time, I'm okay with with how it's sitting right now. I think maybe I'm just sick of it from grinding PTQs and playing against these decks all the time. Yeah, yeah. I just don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> just don't want to. Don't make me do it again. <laughs> yeah. So I, I guess that's it for Copenhagen then. We can go on to... What's the last one? Singapore? Yep, Singapore. The I'm happy about a result in Singapore. <laughs> right. there's, there's one that made me happy. Okay. What, what do you think it is? Well, let's pull up, let me pull up the, the top eight list then. Yeah, the top eight. Okay. Um... Oh, what are you happy about? Let me see. Oh, uh, probably our top four, because two out of the top four were Jun. I don't know what you mean. Mm -hmm. Specifically. <laughs> That's Man, a... we did top eight in one. I'm happy. He did. He got fourth place. He, he, did. Got he, fourth. Did, he did well. Job. He did. Um, yeah, this is very similar to my Jun list. Okay. Almost so... card for card. <laughs> let, me, let me pull up Reed's list real quick. Uh, for everybody to, to, to take. Well, I mean, we can start normally. All right. And do start two with... next okay. first. All right. All right. So, That's today. <laughs> redo. Good job, Redo. You made good job. Four. Um, you done good. Done. You done. You done good. So our our first and second place guys were Affinity. Uh... Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, and and they're the really straightforward. Yeah. In your face Affinity. Um, the four Gal Blast in the main. Just straight up creature wise, uh, I've seen some couple other variations out there that I like a lot. Um, you know, scissors. Uh, well, the, the scissor one is cool, but I mean, even just like having the creature base, but running like the uh, thought casts and stuff in there, yeah. and, and you know that sort of style. So, but but this was just the the straight up. I'm gonna beat your face in. Um, yep. Dump my hand and and uh, hope for the best. So. Check out my Steel Overseer. It wrecks you. Yeah. Yeah, especially in this kind of matchup, I think. So how do you think this matchup plays out? Like, the min mirror for Affinity? Like, is it just whoever gets Steel Overseer wins? Yeah, I, I would I would say <laughs> yeah. that. Like, because, I mean, they're bringing in, like, the Whip Flares and stuff, and the Ancient Grudges in the mirror. Um, well, they don't want Whip Flare in the mirror. Oh, that kills their creatures, too. I'm so... Yeah, you're right. No, it won't kill anything. It's not artifacts. Oh, what's the what's the one? Pyroclasm is the one I'm thinking. Oh, okay, of. yeah, pyroclasm. Yeah, pyroclasm is what flare, but doesn't kill or that kills artifacts. Yes. There we go. Yeah. So yeah, they're bringing an ancient grudge. Yeah, I think it's just whoever gets the steel overseer planted. Yeah, um, like whoever is steel overseer with enough uh, little creatures to enable it. Yeah, that seems right. Um, you, I mean, there's they still have those like arc mound battles and everything. Yeah. Um. And you could still try to kind of get that burst in and be like, all right, cool, I'm going to sack everything to the Ark and, and sack it to this guy and kill you. Um, Infect people out with your Ink Moth Nexus. <laughs> it's fun, man. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, if any decks want to do it too, I... <laughs> right? Um, you go legit plan. <laughs> um, but, like, I, I, I'm not an Affinity player. I know how to play against it with the decks that I have. But the mirror matchup, I could not really speak too much in, but it sounds like that would be the, the best sort of play. Yeah. Unless, you know, there's other things that you've got to do ahead of time and have to go for, like, the arcbound plan or have to go for, you know, um, some sort of just cranial plating to the face okay. style. But um, I, I know this is super off topic, but can we have some organization in these deck lists? 
Like, at all? <laughs> uh, well, yeah. I like, is... by mana, or... Something. I don't know, alphabetical? <laughs> just kind of random. Around. Yeah, it is. Uh, <laughs> now, the, the second place list, though... Um, we're starting to see a little bit more of this in some affinity lists is Dispatch. Yeah. Um, I don't know why it's taking this long. Um, I don't know. Like It's good, right? It, it's it's a decent card. You're playing paying one lot white to essentially exile a creature. Um, yeah. Or worst case, for whatever reason, you're, you're paying one white to, to tap a creature. I think um, you're losing if that's happening. Yeah. Um, but... I don't know. Uh, it w so this is the list that, that is running the, the master uh, in the main board. Um, yeah, it's got one master with you. Yeah, in, in there, and it's got that little bit of extra kind of uh, interaction with dispatch, while the other one uh, is more burst and kill you. You can just sit there and here's a gal blast for four at the face to take you out. Um, while this one doesn't run uh, any gal blast. Um, so I could see how the other one's positioned better for the mirror. Yeah. Um, I yeah, I'm not really sure here. I, I've seen dispatch. I've seen it be very good. Yes. Like I lost a, a thunder mile guide to it once. Mm. I was sad. <laughs> <laughs> this was just like an online match, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think dispatch is good. I I don't know. I've got a friend who's playing affinity. He's not running it, so maybe I'm not correct, but. I just look at dispatch and think, yeah, this this should be at least like one or two of. Yeah, I, I for whatever reason, like I don't f necessarily feel that uh, mm -hmm. if I was playing Affinity, I don't think I would want dispatch though. Okay. I think I would rather have Galv Blast. Just so you can hit people in the face with it. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Um, but I, I think it, maybe that just speaks to the the style of player you are. And I think that's yeah. what can be cool now with Affinity is that we do have that sort of slight, all right, are you running Thoughtcast or not? Are you running Dispatch or not? Are you running, you know, Gal Blast or not? And, and it's, the list is pretty much the same with those kind of just slight variations like that. Yeah, I, I am a fan of Thoughtcast. Yes, I, I love so Thoughtcast. I, I guess the Thoughtcast Dispatch deck is for me then. <laughs> I'm running Thoughtcast and Gal Blast. Ooh, spicy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, so let's move on to the deck that matters. The uh, Jund list. <laughs> so the, the third place Jund list actually didn't run Bob's again. Mm. Um, this is a, a thing, I guess. I didn't know. But we do see the main deck, Fulminator Mage. Only one in this case. I've seen a lot more than one. Yeah. Um, yeah he's got the four goys, which is normal. Three scoos, normal. Um, I guess in the no Bob version, you want to run two Tassigars. That make, kind of makes sense. And the kind of spicy thing here is double Olivia. Yeah, main I've seen like one of in main. Yeah. Um, but I've seen a lot of like one main, one side. Mm -hmm. But never two main. Wow. Yeah. Or not since the days of Jundan Standard, at least. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, right. Um, it's kind so, of so, so maybe that's why there's no Bob because you've got all these four costs. I mean, Tasker yeah. is six, Olivia is four, Huntmaster four, Fulminator is three. Yeah, so, it is yeah. it's putting your curve a little high. Maybe you just don't want the bobs in this case. Mm -hmm. I I think that I still just want four, but there are other options, clearly, because two lists without any bobs, top aided. Yeah. So, you know, I guess there's just two styles to jund. I like the bob more aggressive route, and this is, again, this is more of, like, a board presence deck. It's it's closer to Abzan, but you're playing red because you get Colgan's Command and Lightning Bolt. Yep. Instead of white for Cedrano, which isn't even that good right now. Yeah. So, alright. I stand having learned about a new kind of gem. Yay! <laughs> so, let's talk uh, Reed's list, which is a little bit different than uh, our third place. Yeah. So, uh, so, so Reed is, is closer to the, the list I like, where it's a little more aggressive. Mm -hmm. So, he's got the four bobs, which I just like the best turn to play ever. Yeah. He's got four Inquisition, two Thoughtseize. It's pretty normal right now. Um, double Maelstrom Pulse is for Tassigers mainly. Hmm. Like, you just can't kill four or fives, or it's very difficult unless you have a Terminate. Yeah. And then, first instance, we got four Bolts, which is completely normal. Two Decays and two Terminates. Um, generally, I look at Decay and Terminate as, like, a playset of its own. Like, if you want three Terminates, you can only one run Decay. Mm, 
Okay. So he's going two two, and then two Colgan's commands, which is the normal number right now. Yeah. This is closer to his stock list. The only kind of weird, or I shouldn't say weird, but um, the only spicy thing here is the Chandra. Mm -hmm. I like it. Yeah, I think Chandra's good. Like I've I've played her in Jun before and been very happy. Um, this is more. <laughs> Like I, I thought she was going to be good for Sling Ring Souls, which was why I was playing her then. And didn't end up being as great for Sling Ring Souls as I thought, because she just died. Yeah. But <laughs> was still pretty good at um, just getting you a lot of card advantage in the right matchups. Just those zero abilities, really strong. Now, what do you think of his board? Um, you know, the Thoughtseize, Ancient Grudges, and Duress make sense, but keeping his Huntmasters uh, in yeah. the board instead of in the main. Um, and there's three kitchen things in the board as well. And Grim Lobster so, in there. Yeah, he's he's really I don't know, he's kind of pre-boarded a bit for like um, no, actually he hasn't done anything like that. Okay, so he's got he's got his one full minute sideboard, which is a lot less than most right now. So he's kind of giving up on the Tron slash <laughs> Bloom matchups, mm -hmm. but it you know gives him an advantage in other places. He's got two Hunt Masters, three Finks. And the duress for burn, so I think that's actually a pretty decent burn matchup post board. Um, a lot of decks are running these life gain cards main like Huntmasters, masters, but they're kind of slow and dirty in some matchups. Yeah. So he just doesn't want them there in the main deck, which makes sense. And having five of these post boards give you a really good chance game two. Like you're probably gonna win game two for sure, and then game three is a toss up. So I think it's like a still fine way to go. Um, he's probably never gonna be burn main deck though. Yeah. Which that eh, it happens. Yeah, there's there are matchups like that, and you, and you can't sacrifice too much of what you you've got in your main to try to deal with one matchup. So, right, yeah, you, yeah, pretty much. You just you don't want to have your deck become some degenerate thing that just beats one thing. Yeah, like, if I want to beat Bloom Titan, I can do it. I'm not winning any other matchups. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Abzan. Oh really? Mm-hmm. But and why? Well, I mean, it's... <laughs> but why? When you could run red, why would you want to run white? Well, check out this awesome angel. Angel? Sagarda? Mm-hmm. Okay, that's kind of spicy. You know, a little, little spice in there. But again, like the siege spice. rhinos. Uh, it's... Runs some lingering souls. It also runs wrath in main board, which is kind of cool. Oh, yeah. So this is pretty controlly. Two wraths. Mm-hmm. Only two Lingering Souls. Right yeah. now, I think the reason we're on white in these decks is four Lingering Souls. I that's, that's what I would say, but... Yeah. Like, just the metagame right now really wants Lingering Souls. Mm -hmm. And, like, is he trying to... He's not even that good right now. <laughs> he was good in a time where, you know, we were playing versus Delver. And yeah. we needed to actually have a way to kill them. That was a threat they just could never answer. Mm -hmm. And Siege Runner was perfect, but we don't need that anymore. I mean, and like now everybody's playing Tassiger. Yeah, you just you just play Tassiger. <laughs> like everybody is. Yeah. Play Tassiger and Tarmogoyf. It's good enough right now, I think. Mm -hmm. Um and Siege Runners are just too slow. Yeah. Play four mana for your, your four or five is it, it was always a lot in modern. Yeah. And it was kinda weird that Siege Runner was good for a little bit in modern mm -hmm. because like, you know, four mana four or five is just not very good even with the landing helix on it. Right. And we're kind of back to the point where it's not great again. Yeah, you want to be spending one mana for that, guys. Come on. Yeah. If he hit Jund every match, which I'm guessing he probably hit a lot of Jund, he yeah. probably did well. Mm -hmm. This is the matchup Abzan wants. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm less a fan of Abzan right now than I am of Jund, mainly because Path to Exile is not as good as Lightning Bolt. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing. Well, one of, one of the things. <laughs> the main one is I want bolts. Cool. So I like seeing that absent in there. Um, yeah. we, we have to have a twin deck. Here's the uh, uh, teamer twin. It's teamer twin, yeah. So it's a little different. Karma twin, guys. It's so Karma twin. It's Huntmasters. Yeah. Main deck. I think that's an interesting little flavor. Yeah, it's not normal. <laughs> and, I, I've seen it. Yeah, but it's you know good good stuff on him. The other thing, Roast is starting to see a lot more play now. Yeah. Boo. Die Tassiger. Boo. Die Tassiger. Boo. <laughs> I, I hate playing against it. There's more Why? more stuff to have to deal with. Like, not only do you, you guys all have your lightning bolts and stuff to kill my creatures, but now you've got another thing with roast. Oh, for in fact. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. That's like lightning bolts, I at least, you know, 
can, can be able to uh, live through it with like wild defiance. Yeah, you and can stuff, even pump your guy through it. <laughs> gross? No, that's five damage. What is this? This is mean. <laughs> None of my creatures fly. No. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's a nice little you know teamer twin. Um, we've got our our company list here, and this one's running the yeah. Kiki in there and Resto in there. So this Ooh. is this is like. Uh, um, it's four color. It's also running Deceiver, so it's just like, hey, hey guys, I, I can I can do stuff. This is blue, everything but what? Everything uh, but red. No, it's know. got red because it's got um, key and black? is it? Yeah, I don't see any black. Okay. Green, white, blue, uh, and red, and it's got of course three chords, four collected. Uh, <laughs> Three pads. Yeah, it's just it's just like, hey, look at all these these creatures that can do stuff. <laughs> There's a lot of one ups in this deck. Yeah, yeah. Revoker, Phyrexian Revoker. Mm -hmm. I don't even. Oh, okay, that's the one where you name a. It's like Pitting Needle creature. Yes. He's got so he's got a Phyrexian Revoker, a Spell Skite, Kiki Jiki, Restoration Angel. Is it Sadicaster, Deceiver Exarch, Scavenging Ooze? All is one of those. Oh, Fauna Shaman. Mm -hmm. He's got three Fauna Shamans main. This is spicy. I'm happy now. Mm -hmm. This deck's sweet. <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not your normal collected deck. Uh, no. So if you're sitting there with a bunch of stuff like this lying around, you're like, and you want to have some fun, this will yeah. be a, a good fun deck for you. Here is your fun. <laughs> Here is your fun. Remember um, those geeky five players who were sad? Now you can be not sad anymore because you can just do the same thing anyway. <laughs> Look at this, uh, another team or devil, but this time it's running the um, hooting mandrels. Hoots. Yeah, so it, oh, it goes for, for instead of the Grixis Delver deciding, you know what, Goyf is too good to pass up, and even though that uh, Angler is pretty cool, I think having a, a bunch of apes is better. Um, yeah. <laughs> the monkey. The monkey. The monkey is with you. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, it's running Tarfire in there. What? I don't, I don't know. Uh, I know why. I don't know why. He wants his Tarmogoyce to be bigger. Oh, because it's tribal instant. <laughs> yeah. It's oh. tribal. <laughs> I don't think it's worth it. Uh. <laughs> it's, like, it's like lightning bolt number five, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> it's really one's tribal. <laughs> That's sweet. Yeah. yeah so. uh, looking at his sideboard, he's got four hunt masters. This is wow. hunt master. You a card? Mm -hmm. You know how much hunt master is now? How he's much? like twenty bucks. Wow. They were like. Five. They were cheap. Yeah. Yeah. Out of stock at nineteen on Star City. Gosh. Good thing I have the set. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway. Um. <laughs> so also got running volley, which is sweet. I like running volley. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, that was uh. That was our, our list. Um, yeah. Of, of cards and decks and stuff so a good variety we didn't see the same deck winning every event um no which was, which cool. was nice um the other thing is we've got that that was it for season three for for the modern gps um, yeah season four is coming up um and the next modern event is september so we've got a couple months yeah, a couple months to prepare for. It's going to be Oklahoma City in Oklahoma uh -huh. there, and at September twelfth through the thirteenth, uh, for all you so guys. The, the question here, Naman. Yeah. Is are you going to fly across the country to go to this? <sighs> Probably not. Uh, that's too bad because I might actually be there. <laughs> that would be really cool. That, uh, see, the, the the biggest thing is, uh, my fiance's birthday is September tenth. Oh. Um. So, um, they're would be no way that I would be able to, to leave her birthday weekend. So you'd have to leave on the 11th, which is, what, Friday? Yeah, that's Friday. <laughs> yeah, alright, that's fair. So, yeah. Once again, thwarted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what's our next event, then? We've got one in October after that. Yep, we have no October 31st, mm -hmm. so I, that's, that's Halloween, right? Yes. So Halloween and November first, we have Porto Alegre, Brazil. I'm gonna go ahead and assume that was correctly pronounced. I'll give it to you. It sounded right. It did. Yeah. And then uh, November twenty first and twenty second, we have Pittsburgh, 
I, I think it's in Pennsylvania, right? I, yes, I, just, that's I don't correct. know anything about American. <laughs> hey, I thought uh, that uh, Copenhagen was in Sweden or where yeah. I said not Denmark. So yeah, I know nothing there. about the rest of the world. Okay, fair. I mean, apparently I didn't know that either. So, <laughs> uh, but I might try to go to the Pittsburgh one. We'll see. Well, I, I can't. So. I can't go to Pittsburgh. I know. You see how this doesn't work? Right. right. Do you understand how this is not working for me? <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, so we've got a little bit of downtime, guys, before uh, some major uh, modern GPs and stuff. So, so mm. keep your eyes out um, for, for that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, that's really it for, for today in the show that we wanted to kind of discuss uh, kind of the, the happenings in modern as of right now. Um, I don't know when our next show will be. Um, yeah, it, it's kind of... Uh... <laughs> A thing like next weekend is pre-release, yes. so I, I don't think we'll have time then. No. Unless you want to do like Sunday evening, but I don't. Yeah. <laughs> so there won't be one next week because it will be the pre-release, and a lot of people will be focused on that. Yeah. Um, um we could do it the week after. Um, I will be out of town that week. We could do it the week after so that. Maybe the end of <laughs> July we will be having another show for you guys. Cool. <laughs> yeah. It, one of the uh, one of the issues we have is, is not the freest of schedules during yeah. the school year, sp- uh, specifically. So uh, shows will be you know whenever we have time, and the I feel like the main way we're gonna have you know try to get people to listen would be either on YouTube or, or some kind of permanent you know permanent viewing site, whatever yeah. you want to call it, like podcasting or something. Right. As opposed to watching live, which is cool though. We definitely do want people to watch live. That'd be awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I think that's pretty much all we got for today, though, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. So why don't we go do some shout outs and stuff, and then sure. call it a night. Yeah. So uh, I am Brandon slash Muatarn on Twitter. It's just at M U A T A R A N. I think it's up here somewhere. It is. It's below your 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 face. Sweet. Here. It's right below my picture of the beautiful lawless troll eating a piece of meat. So, Law of Trolls excited if you follow me. <laughs> and it is a great way just to figure out what's going on. Also, I do upload YouTube videos. I try to do it every Thursday. I've been slacking lately. I need to get better about it. But uh, I actually have some recorded, some Modern Masters, so that should be good times. Nice. Good stuff. Uh, so, I'm Nan Man, or the real Nan Man, as you'll see below. Uh, if you guys like this stuff, please hit the follow button here on the Twitch channel, because you'll know when we go live for any other content that we do um, and we'll be having the at least in response to uh, podcast hosted up here for our live shows yes. uh, we'll put up the uh, VOD of the show as well on YouTube youtube.com slash nanman for now um, and some other places as well for you guys to enjoy um, I've been doing some more modern events and everything and I'm actually going to hopefully start doing some uh, coverage at my shop soon um, my buddy and I are, are working out the details with it uh, and then we're also going to start doing extra videos like uh, point of view uh, drafting, um, both of cube and regular drafting and stuff, and just more more magic related content is going to start coming out uh, in the future. Um, so you know, make sure you guys are hitting the follow on my Twitter as well to know what sort of projects and stuff that uh, I'm working on right now. But um, that's going to do it for us here tonight, guys. Thanks so much for checking us out for our first episode of In Response to. Uh, you know, please feel free to leave us comments about any uh, feedback or thoughts you might have on the show. Uh, we would greatly appreciate it. But uh, that's going to be it for us, guys. We'll see you guys next time. All right. Peace.